Live look at Outlang Stadium in downtown St. Pete. Home pitch of the Tampa Bay Rowdies as they get set to take on the Montreal Impact as the USL Championship gets set to challenge the MLS here tonight in day two of the Suncoast Invitational. I'm Drew Felios. A little bit later on, going to be joined by Ryan Davis, and we're going to have this broadcast for you in its entirety. We'll begin a little after 7 o'clock, so we will see you then for the kickoff. The Tampa Bay Rowdies hosting the Montreal Impact.
It is a gorgeous night at Al Lang Stadium in downtown St. Pete. And we are ready for USL Championships Tampa Bay Rowdies taking on the Montreal Impact out of the MLS. It's day two of the Suncoast Invitational for 2019. I'm Drew Felios. Thank you so much for joining us. Ryan Davis will be along for the ride here tonight. And Ryan, we're excited. Should see some fabulous soccer here tonight. And the pitch is absolutely gorgeous as we get ready for play. An absolutely spectacular night here in Arlang Stadium. You're right, Drew. Beautiful February night. And boy, are we ready for some soccer. Tampa Bay Rowdies coming off a heartfelt 1-0 loss to DC United. But what an effort by the home team. Youthful, gutsy, energetic. Exactly what Neil Collins wanted is what he got. Uh, they're going to bring the energy again tonight. And hopefully we see some more rowdy action tonight. Tampa Bay Rowdies will wear the all black tonight. There's Neil Collins, second season for Coach Collins as the head coach. But remember, he became the head coach about the starting third of the season last year. Had a chance to talk with him earlier today. Oh, what a difference nearly a year makes as he has learned so much from 2018. Yes, he has. And he's come up with this new philosophy of youth. No player over the age of 28 on this roster. He has already made an impact. He is putting his stamp on this team. Rowdies want to be young and hungry and a good job doing that so far. Coach Remy on the other side for Montreal. The impact 14 wins, 16 defeats a season ago and four draws. 46 points they want to be in the postseason this year. And as far as how they performed on Saturday, what would your assessment be? I would say they're well on their way. They have a, a lovely mix between experience and youth. They themselves have invested a lot in the youth movement, but they have experience in Ignacio Piatti, who's not playing tonight, Novio as well, and they brought in a young, hungry forward in Iruti, who scored the goal on that very evening on Saturday night. Rowdy's unable to score a goal last Saturday night, although they did play well defensively against DC United. So let's see if we can get a sample of that firepower here tonight. There's Jordan Doherty, number 22, who is on loan from the EFL's Sheffield United FC. So a new starter for Montreal tonight in goal. Evan Bush, 32 years old out of Montreal, Quebec. Different goalkeeper tonight for the visitors and for Tampa Bay, John McCarthy. Spent the last four years with the Philadelphia Union. Also played a lot of time with the Bethlehem Steel, of course, their affiliate. And is the 2014 USL goalkeeper of the year from his days with Rochester. We are underway from Al Lang. The temperatures tonight just perfect. A light breeze blowing through downtown St. Pete. And the weather not too good other parts of the country, but it is gorgeous right here in Rowdy's country. This is where you want to be in a February, right here in Florida, experience a Florida night. Looks like the Rays have started with um, Coach Collins' favorable 3-5-2. And they are pressing early with the young Juan Tejada leading the line tonight. Tarek Morad gets up in the air for Tampa Bay. And now Montreal will work out of the Center circle, Anthony Jackson Hamal, the forward out of Montreal, a touch as it goes to the feet of McCarthy. So two goalies right now on the roster for Tampa Bay, John McCarthy and Macklin Robinson, but I think it could be McCarthy's job to lose. He's got the experience. I think he's the guy who the Rowdies want to take charge. John McCarthy what was at his very best on Saturday night, commanding the box, setting the tone, and giving this backline uh, some reassurance and confidence. So like you said, it is his job to lose from tonight. Mohamed Cohn. In the lineup for Tampa Bay, Caleb Richards also a touch. And this is what the Rowdies want to see. Some precision, some rhythm, some camaraderie here in the early minutes. On Saturday night, this back three that we just touched on, they were so solid. They set the tone for this Rowdies team. They passed the ball from left to right so effortlessly, but yet they were so commanding defensively. And it's exactly what Coach Collins wants. Some confidence, some youth, and some energy. And that's exactly what this back three provided. 
Tarek Morad back for his second season as a Rowdy. Former Louisville City star. Now played to the feet of Caleb Richards. Richards should be a huge factor this year. And Ekra will send it across the pitch. And it'll be a goal kick coming up for Evan Bush. Yeah, Caleb Richards coming over from Norwich City. You know, the Canaries are so prestigious over in England. And the fact that the Rowdies can form that partnership will help both the Canaries over in the Tampa Bay area and, of course, the Rowdies over in the England area. So a chance for young Caleb Richards to get some first-team action and really stretch his legs and show the team what he has to offer. Caleb Richards and the Rowdies now controlling. Jordan Doherty will play it back, and Tampa Bay will attack now from the midfield line. Well, so far, so good for the Rowdies. Rowdy's trying to get a cross in. This one will sail high, but Richards will track it down. Caleb Richards, an electric left foot. And this will be the first corner kick, I believe, for Tampa Bay here in the fourth minute. Well, the Rowdies are looking so comfortable on the ground, keeping the ball on the ground. As we see Steinberger takes a quick corner. Zach Steinberger. Getting the start tonight, former Jacksonville Armada in the NASL, and now Richards sends one in off the head just outside the six that time. And you're going to see one guy targeted, Juan Tejada. We haven't had a chance to talk about him yet. Number 17, he brought a spark over the weekend. It's exactly what Coach Collins has been preaching, and they have found this talent right here in their backyard in Tampa put him in into the Rowdies lineup um, on Saturday and he proved himself worthy. Nice move made. The shot taken on the curl and just off. Anthony Jackson Hamal able to squirt free. The 25 year old nearly had the first goal of the night. Well Hamal just turning well on that um, on Diakite showing him his right foot cutting back to his left trying to go to that far post just shows a little bit of skill and what he has to offer to this Montreal impact team. So McCarthy will send it out for the Rowdies. Tampa Bay younger, significantly younger than they were a season ago. And you, you look forward to 2019 and you ask yourself, Ryan, what are the Rowdies going to miss most? And I think the leadership of guys like Marcel Schaefer and Joe Cole is going to be huge. Georgie Ristoff, also the franchise's all-time leading scorer, as Tejada tracks it down now in Tampa Bay. Able to control it. Some nice pace and rhythm here in the first 10 minutes. I think they're going to miss the goals of Georgie Ristoff, and they're going to miss that orchestrating sort of um, talent that Joe Cole has. They're going to have to find someone in the middle of the park to dictate the play, to take the flow, and also want someone to step up and find the back of the net for this rowdy team. Here's Morad. Time and space now for Doherty. He'll send it right. And a flag will go up. So the first offside called on Tampa Bay here in the sixth minute. You know, speaking about creative players, we look at um, Quadro Puku. We look at Andrew Tenari, who actually started on Saturday night, had a nice bit of flair, a bit of zip coming through the middle. These are the type of players have to step up and command the center circle and dictate things for the Rowdies. Looking forward to the 2019 season. Zakaria Diallo. Nailing from France, 32 years old. You see on the far side too, Michael Azira, the Ugandan. Over there looks like he perhaps may have been shaken up on the last play. So day two of the Suncoast Classic, Montreal and Tampa Bay. Two teams looking to significantly improve their standing in the upcoming season. Both, I think, sort of underperformed last year. And this is a great way to sort of sharpen their skills as we head into the month of March. 
you know, Coach Remy from Montreal wanted to use tonight this atmosphere as a sort of an away sort of test for his Montreal Impact team. And that just shows, gives credence to this Tampa Bay crowd, this atmosphere, but it also shows how much he respects the Sunshine State Invitational. And it's the Impact's fourth straight season here. And Coach Remy not taking it lightly. And that's an ultimate credit and respect to the Rowdies. Rudy Camacho on top of it will send it back to Bush. Morad gets ahead on it. And now Baya trying to control it for Montreal. Impact founded in 1992. Began MLS play back in 2012, the 19th team in the league. Right now, getting the cross on and sending it in for Jackson Hamill. That's the second opportunity that he has had so far in this first 10 minutes. All right, all started with number 17, David Schwanier, cutting inside, drawing the defense, then putting it back out on the left, sort of reversing the play, if you will, and an excellent ball across the face of the goal. But Jackson Hamill just has to keep his head down and get over on that one. Well, no soccer coming at you. Montreal Impact taking on the San Jose Quakes Saturday night, 10 o'clock on TVA Sports. Montreal fans, hope to see you there. An exciting season in store for the Impact. As your team right now down in the Sunshine State enjoying some gorgeous weather, getting that hard work in, though, fine-tuning the skills. Because the MLS, popularity-wise, energy-wise, talent-wise, just getting better and better, isn't it? Year after year, and the MLS are dipping their hands into different pools. Now the South American pool seems to be the flavor, bringing young South American talent in, bringing up the standard of play for the youths in this country, and it's beginning to show in the MLS. USL Championship also growing, rebranding of the league. With USL Championship and then League One and League Two this year. Unprecedented success the league is enjoying right now. And it is certainly going to continue. Impact once again getting numbers forward as Brock Guiar sends it left. Numbers now in the box for Montreal. Rowdy's defenders finally able to get on the ground and a nice slide for Ekra. Oh, fantastic tackle there by the big Mohamed Kone. And he proved, his, he proved his worth on Saturday night and showing Coach Collins his belief and his trust in him in picking him again here tonight. Kone and Diakite already forming a bit of a partnership back there. And the sooner they can do that, the more stable and the more sure this Rowdy's defense will be. Now it's Morad. You look at Kone and Diakite. Kone, of course, the new Rowdy, but very similar. Both very tall along that back line. You can sense Coach Collins likes that back line. Tall, imposing, intimidating even at, at times. Well, just ask Mr. Wayne Rooney. On Saturday night, he had some bruises to rub on Sunday morning. Kone, Diakite, I think it was Sean Barry it was that night. They all did a great job in showing their physical impact and imposing themselves and their will on the game. Brandon Allen, a little quiet so far. Number 10 for Tampa Bay. As Bush collects now for another goal kick. And think about Brandon Allen, the role that he is going to have for this Rowdies team. This young man right here has been brought in to do one thing, score goals. And he's been given the LDS, the number 10. What a big badge that is to wear. And Brandon Allen, I am sure, will live up to that hype. Eight goals last year with Nashville SC. Also played for the Bethlehem Steel. And also had some good games against the Rowdies. As Juan Tejada tries to get ahead. Tejada covering a lot of ground up there. He is just a bundle of energy on the pitch. You know, that's exactly what this team wanted and needed. Uh, a spark plug, if you will. And Juan Tejada, with nothing to lose, has come in here and showed what he has and just bringing that energy. And it's so contagious for the rest of the team.
Scoreless here in downtown St. Pete, 13th minute. Montreal in the white and blue Tampa Bay Rowdies wearing the all black here tonight. Impact now building from the back. Zachary bought Guillard out of Lyon, France. Only 20 years old. As Bush plays it once more. Evan Bush getting the start tonight in goal for Montreal, also wearing the captain's armband. And now Montreal with David Schwanier, middle of the pitch. He'll send it left. Nice placement this time, trying to set up the cross. Diakite in position. Schwanier had a lot of room there. I think he was just a little too heavy on the pass. And that sort of took the left winger out of the play. Pape Diakite out of the Senegal. Great find last year for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Well, nice one-two play, but again, broken up that time. Kone in position. So Kone and Diakite doing their jobs here early. Well, that's the advantage of having three center backs. Everything is nice and compact. Those one-twos often get spoiled, as you can see Kone just in the right place at the right time. Great coaching, great strategy by Coach Collins, and the defense showing why. Jan Ekra gets this run going now. Zach Steinberger plays it out of the center circle. Zach has all sorts of experience from IMG to the Houston Dynamo to the Jacksonville Armada. I think he's going to be a great fit here for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. It's amazing how some of these players bounce around throughout not just the country but the entire world and find a place here with this Rowdies franchise. There's so many factors involved in sports and finding a home, finding a team. You know, on the field, off the field, it all plays a part in you finding your your place. And I really hope um, Steinberger, number eight, can find a home right here with the Rowdies. Had a great night on Saturday night, delivered the ball beautifully, composed the field like what we spoke about. Hopefully he can do it again tonight. And a great job in the offseason. General Manager Lee Cohen assessing the entire board of talent across the country, across the world. and. Looking for those guys who are just going to be the perfect fit as Rowdies. I think we have got a great group this year. I think so. Lovely mix. Very youthful. Everybody's on the same page. Wants to prove themselves. Wants to prove this, this Rowdy club to be worthy again. So I think everybody on and off the field are on the same page. There's Marad now being chased by Baia. Diakite. Giveaway that time may have taken one to the face. Also, Pape goes down and now numbers for Montreal. The impact try for the cross and the header is a little bit high as Jackson Hamill has had now three good chances and a bit of concern for the Rowdies as Diakite is nose down right now on his knees. Well, number 32, Michael Azira just came across to check on Diakite. He was the one that dispossessed him, and Diakite having some choice words to the referee. As you can see, there's some blood on his lip, showing that there was an errant elbow, and hence the reason he was dispossessed. Well, Pape Diakite, such a fiery player. Exactly what this Rowdy's team needs at the center back position. Someone who will set the tone for them. And Diakite, ever since he came across in mid last season, has done exactly that. Diakite, by his motions, can tell, caught an elbow that time. Making it clear to the official hey, the, the foul is not on me, is it? <laughs> As McCarthy will put it down right now for another goal kick. John McCarthy, talent, experience. As we'll stop action one more time. And Diakite going to trot off for a moment as we resume play here in the I think, 18th minute. I think he got off for some attention and just walked back on without the officials knowing. So the referee was none too happy. 
And now another player is on the ground for Tampa Bay. So remember, this technically is an exhibition. <laughs> Do not want to lose players. Zach Steinberger, a little shaken up that time. You know, once the whistle blows and the action starts, it's so hard to tone it down. Yes, it's an exhibition, but these players are going to be giving it at their all, trying to get into shape and show the, these coaches what they have. So what you're saying, even though it is an exhibition, there's really <laughs> no such thing, especially when you're playing an MLS side, a chance to send a message to not just the opposing team, but the entire soccer world. Yeah, I mean, the Montreal Expos, this is their second game out of three in an eight-game span. So tonight, Coach Remy, the, the Montreal Impact, they they're going to be playing some of the fringe players, some of the younger players. So they're going to try to impose themselves here tonight. Montreal Expos, you know, the Tampa Bay Rays are the owner of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, but we are playing soccer, right? Yeah, it's very close to spring training, so <laughs> my mind is uh, starting to drift in that direction. Well, this is at one time an amazing spring training venue of the Rays and of the St. Louis Cardinals long time ago, but transformed into a beautiful soccer home for the Rowdies. I know you were thinking baseball. How about Manny Machado? $300 million man for you know, the Padres. You know, and it, I, I hate to say this true, but it actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. The guy is going to put three to 4,000 extra butts in the seats per week, and that's going to cover the bill. So great move, and all the best to Machado. 20th minute. Here at Al Lang, still scoreless. Montreal has had a pretty good few chances by Anthony Jackson Hamel. Have not been able to score one just yet. Brock Yard puts it in the hands of Bush. That's a great bit of distribution by Bush. hundred and forty four appearances in the MLS sort of the granddaddy of the MLS goalkeepers right now huh there's a Oof. lot of time logged and I think Mohammed Kone should be equipped with lights and a horn Drew. <laughs> and I show him the midfielder out of Edmonton, Alberta. Baia sends it back. And now Brooke Yard, the defender from France. Montreal, last five minutes, have done a really good job possessing, and the Rowdies have done a lot of chasing. You know, the ability to change the pace in a soccer game is so important. And uh, the Montreal impact, not the Expos guys, by the way, uh, they are showing that they can dictate the tempo and it's very important to show and I'm sure the coach is going to want them to do that and they are changing the pace here tonight John McCarthy was so impressive on Saturday night for the Rowdies to have that wall just commanded his box had a chance to ask Neil Collins today, what individual players are you really looking forward to standing out? That's a careless giveaway right there as Montreal comes up to take it away, but Baia loses it out of bounds. And I, I, Coach Collins' reaction to me was, Drew, we're not even talking about individuals as of this point right now. It's about our team and the way we want to play. Guys are fighting for spots. It's about the whole package right now I, I think that's a good theme here in the preseason as you see there's points where the Rowdies clearly trying to mesh get to that final third yeah competition is so important and it's going to bring the best out of everybody everyone and with this young group all being on the same page moving in one direction is so important and I think coach Collins is just doing a, an amazing job in creating that type of atmosphere so early on These center backs are going to have so much time on the ball. And the decision making is so important. As you can see, Diakiti with a lovely ball over the top. Richards heads it to Tejada. 
Those two sharing it nicely. Juan Tejada just signed today by the Rowdies. Ekranau. And Tampa Bay doing some nice work in Montreal's half. Here's Morad. Tied up is Tejada. Well, he is playing really feisty for just a youngster recently signed. But now the counter opportunity. Giving chase is Kone. Can't get there just yet, but a nice tackle gets it done as Ekra comes up with it for the Rowdies. And we're going to have a foul here and possibly a yellow. Well, a good, a good bit of transition by the impact, but an even better tackle by Kone, just snuffing out the danger. And it seems to be a frustration sort of tackle by Hamel, missing a couple of chances early on and sort of getting embarrassed a little bit by Kone with that fantastic tackle, just taking out his frustration on the little number seven, Jan Ekra. So first match of discipline handed out here in the 24th minute. So Jackson Hamel given the yellow card. And Kone now will have a little talking to. 2018 was not exactly the year of the official here at Al Lang <laughs> Stadium. And it's amazing throughout the course of a season, Ryan, that when things are not going the way that you planned, how the officials can kind of just snowball and it just didn't go the Rowdy's way, especially here at home. But sometimes your play sort of dictates that, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. The insecurity and the unsure unsureness of yourself starts to set in and that comes out in your play and any sort of hesitation in sport you lose you lose the 50 50 you lose it turns into a 70 30 and it starts to it starts to take place on the field and then it always starts to to show up in the referee's decisions right so yeah there's still rumblings going on in the rowdy seats here about the decisions that took place last year yeah, four red cards here at home handed out in critical situations. And the Rowdies, the most inopportune times, had a hard time overcoming that throughout the course of the season. But th those things are going to happen throughout the course of any campaign, aren't they? Yeah, you know, red cards do look bad, but it also shows intent and aggressiveness on the part of the Rowdies last year, really putting the effort in to try and win the ball back. And... With the modern day soccer, if you do go in hard and you show the wrong intent, you will get carded and that will add up pretty quickly in a game. Pace picking up here. Jordan Doherty collecting for Tampa Bay. And Jan Ekra, number seven, wearing Junior Fleming's number from last season. Very active right now for the Rowdies. Oh, nice little one-two. Top of the 18, the shot was deflected. Goes right back to Doherty. Just a little bit of a spark from Juan Tejada. The right place, right time. Just had the vision to flick it for Steinberger, but it was snuffed out in the end. But it just shows a glimpse of what he can offer. Head for Richards now. And we should have a corner kick coming up. Let's see, was that touched? By Montreal, I believe it was not. Looks like it was an offside call, a late call, but offside nonetheless. But Jan Ekra was the one who started that play in the middle and just went out to the right, the ball going out and back in. So hard to defend. Defenders always have to be in motion going left to right when the ball keeps moving. That allows players like Juan Tejada to nibble, to wiggle free and to create some havoc. Tarek Murad just showing that experience. And that, my friends, is a throw-in that never came into play and should be a rowdy throw. Instead of zero, 
Puts it in motion for Montreal. 28th minute. Now Schwanye sends it back. Impact's going to make Tampa Bay chase just a little bit here. Schwanye seems like an elegant right footer on that left hand side. And it looks like the impact are looking for him at every opportunity. Zero. And now some good cohesion from the impact. Yeah, everyone getting a touch, and that's so important in soccer. There's so much running involved in soccer that when you spend time without the ball, you can get sort of discouraged. So when the ball moves around, everyone gets a touch, keeps them involved. Energy stays elevated. Dikite. Shielding off a defender. Oh, nearly gave it away. Jackson Hamo with the goalie out. And how about Pape Diakite? Well, Pape Diakite cleaning up his own mess. Uh, second guessing himself on the pass back to, to Keeper McCarthy. But Diakite never giving up on the play and an excellent stop to keep this score at zero. He did that so many times in 2018. Games against Nashville and Richmond come to mind. A 26-year-old with match-saving goals. Diakite, another big one there. Is Schwanye now with the corner for the impact. Ball headed up, and McCarthy comes up to take care of it for the Rowdies. There's McCarthy going for that early distribution. Strong left hand all the way up to the second third of the field. That was impressive. Now going back to Pape Diakite, showing signs of preseason, very unsure the relationship between him and McCarthy. Didn't, didn't know if he was coming or going. Didn't know if to run or to hold, as the old song says. But uh, cleaning up his mess in the back, that's all a coach can ask for. And keeping the score at zero. Schwanye now plays it left. Montreal with Brock Guillard. Baia sharing as well. Azira. Impact. And have stuck to their system here in the first half. Now in the 30th minute, want to get a quality chance. And again, able to weave their way right into the teeth of that 18 before Kone came up and took care of it. Yeah, getting, trying to get into the middle of that rowdy defense, but we talked about this before. That rowdy defense is compact. If you want to get in there, the ball has to move. Great job by the right-hand side of that rowdy defense to snuff it out. So right now, Montreal getting a little bit better quality chances than Tampa Bay is. How do you fix that right now, Ryan? I think you're going to have to get up on the ball sooner before the ball starts getting down into your own half of the field. The pressure has to be a little bit higher up to put pressure on the playmakers. And if you invite the pressure, well, you're going to absorb a lot of pressure. If you push it higher up, try and snuff the problem out a little higher up the field. This ball now will be placed down. About 35 yards out. Daniel Lovitz there, number three. Of Winmore, Pennsylvania. One of the few Americans on this Montreal Impact roster. Now, if I was a Montreal Impact, I would want my lefty taking this free kick. It is made for the left footer. The angle for the far post and the near post. It looks like the number three, the left back, Danny Lovitz. Looks very interested. Now here's when your six footers coming to play. Papi Diakite, Mohamed Kone, in the thick of the wall. So will it be Schwanye or Lovitz here? See Tahada also getting in place for the Rowdies on the right side. This will be blasted just to the right. Oh, Lovitz. Had the velocity, ball had the curl just a little right. He struck it beautifully, just inches to the right of the post. What an excellent free kick by Lovitz. Oh, 
little physical up in the air that time was Doherty. Whistle immediately coming in. Seventy six degrees light breeze here at Al Lang Stadium downtown St. Pete Drew Felios Ryan Davis. Hope you're enjoying it tonight. Tampa Bay Rowdies in the second leg now of the Sunk Coast Invitational. Coach Neil Collins talked today about the process to putting his first 11 together. Says, Drew, there's going to be some sleepless nights with all the talent that is on this roster, finding that right mix and where we go forward in these games that we're watching right now. As this weekend, the team will travel up to South Georgia for a scrimmage with Tormenta FC, but this is the time where you earn your spot in the rotation. I think those away games you just touched on are so important. We see the Montreal impact on an away leg here. Sort of that camaraderie comes into place. You start forming a unit. That's also the place where coaches start to figure things out. Start seeing players away from their comfort zone. Start seeing players either bonding or drifting away from the group. I think that's an important leg for the Rowdies coming up. And I'm sure Coach Colling is going to keep a close eye on those two games in Georgia. Team chemistry, so important. Yeah, again, the youth as well as the players that were here last year. For example, Juan Tejada trying to find his place on the team. Then you have an experienced player like Poku, who only came in last year, but has been around the block a couple of times. And to try to integrate those two on the same, on the same field, is going to take every ounce of experience from a coach. Doherty, other side of the pitch now to Diakite. I'm definitely impressed by Jan Ekra, number seven. Former Charlotte Independence. Tons yeah. of experience he brings. In fact, he was here last year. The, the final home game for the Rowdies was against the Independence in a heartbreaking two to one loss that we had a a few times yeah Ryan. that was an exciting game to see the least um, Leon Taylor yeah. putting a goal on the board late Tampa Bay with several chances peppering the Charlotte goal late before conceding two to one as Morad tips one out of bounds for the Rowdies yep the slippery when wet Leon Taylor came on and got a great goal for the Rowdies and I'm sure Coach Collins is going to be looking for that name and that face again in Mr. Taylor. But yeah, just talking about Jan Ekra in the middle of the park, trying to take that Joe Cole role into this season. As the Rowdies back three push up nice and neatly to get that offside call. It certainly gives a lot of relief to your midfield when your back three can push up and catch forwards in an offside trap it means your midfield doesn't have to trek all the way back to defend. Ekra can't collect, and now Montreal with a breakaway attempt. Trying to cut it back. This is Jackson Hamel, and again, unsuccessful. Boy, he's going to have nightmares about that Rowdy's back line because he has had so many chances here in the first half. Yeah, you're going to have to pay the rent tonight if you want to come into the Rowdy's box. Pape Diakite and Mohamed Kone are closing up the shop. And the, the way they compress everything, the impact are going to have a long night trying to get in there. Here's Baia now, the cross. And again, Diakite all over the place. Now this is when Juan Tejada and crew have to push up and give some relief to the defenders. Brock Yard now shoots this one right past the goal. McCarthy was in place. You're, you're dealing with the team now, obviously, an MLS side, highly skilled athletes on this Montreal roster. So if you are the Rowdies and you want to be victorious on the scoreboard, it's going to take an A-plus effort, isn't it? Yeah, to break down this impact team, you're going to have to bring your best. It's going to have to take discipline. It's going to have to take oodles of energy. Almost you have to outrun them, outspark them to try and get a goal tonight. Concentration also, because this is a team we've seen in the counters 
in this first half. They can make you pay so quickly. Correct. They themselves are trying to find cohesiveness. And when they stay close and compact, they can catch you on the counter, as we saw a couple times already in this first half. Here's Morad now. Become a leader on this Rowdies team. 13 starts a season ago. Signed in the middle part of the season. Here's Tarek. Slowing things down for Tampa Bay. Get the feel. Rowdies want to play a little bit more methodical. Richards now puts it in motion. Nobody there right in the middle of the 18 is Kone. Bit of a wrestling match. Ekra has it at his feet. And it's getting a little physical now on the Montreal side. Well, Caleb Richards showing what he has on this left-hand side. A very deft left foot. Good cross by him. I'm sure it's going to give Coach Collins some questions to answer. With the skillful Leo Fernandez usually roaming that left flank. Just looking, just looking at Mohamed Kony as well, interacting and disrupting the impact further up the field. It kept the, the possession up there with a hefty challenge. And there's no limit to what the physicality of these, this back three can bring for this rowdy team. Doherty sharing with McCarthy. Take a look at Montreal head coach Rene. Second season. And what a playing career he has on his resume. You talk about well-established, prestigious clubs. He has done it all. Oh, when you start talking about Lyon in his home country of France, and then he steps across the channel into England, we talk Arsenal, the Gunners, and then we talk about Aston Villa. Just a long resume for coach Remy he has certainly seen some action on the field Ekra Morad sharing here's Doherty now again scoreless here through 40 minutes Montreal has had some quality chances though Rowdy's had a few in the first 10 minutes not been able to muster much offensively though but Diakite doing a great job along the back line. Ekra has been impressive as well. You know, just looking at the turnover on these two rosters from Saturday night to tonight, coach is definitely trying to find that right seasoning for the pot, that right mix, trying to give their fringe players every effort, every opportunity. And then we see some of the players that played on Saturday night trying to give them the minutes to get fitness. We saw Brandon Allen come in and had a nice long spell on Saturday night. And we see him starting tonight trying to give Coach Collins, trying to give him every opportunity to work himself into shape. And a question about the impact, looking for their star player, Ignacio Piatti, the star left lefty from Argentina. Krolicki challenged, able to keep it now as Azira and Montreal trying to get something working here before halftime. But then, oh, what a pass. On the ground, brilliant. Jackson Amo, how about McCarthy to deny? Oh, what a great ball by Lovitz, but McCarthy alive to it, closing down the angle, getting there before Hamel can, can find his corner. Great pass, great bit of keeping, and McCarthy carrying over his form from Saturday night. Former Philadelphia Union and Bethlehem Steel star having a solid first half for Tampa Bay. But Hamel, probably his fourth chance already for the first half, has to be counting his chances by now. So as this Tampa Bay Rowdies roster comes together and they build that chemistry, What's the thing you'd rather have first? Great offense or great defense? You always build a team from the back going forward. So having a keeper, having that back three stabilized, and then having two holding midfielders, that will, that will be considered the spine of your team. So Coach Collins will have to perfect that sooner rather than later. And McCarthy and this back three 
have shown that they're already in mid-season form. Caleb Richards. Rowdy still trying to score the first goal on their home pitch here in 2019. Baia battling for it in that near corner. And how about Caleb Richards? Part of the relationship built with the Rowdies in Norwich City FC, one that is going to pay dividends for years to come. Only 20 years old. This kid has a bright future and has a chance to gain experience right here in the Rowdies' backyard. Just a win-win for Norwich and for the Rowdies. And if all goes well, it'll just continue to strengthen that relationship. You're going to see more players come across to get that experience. And hey, not too bad to come across into Tampa Bay in the middle of winter and have some and play some soccer in this beautiful Arlange Stadium. Well, that is Pape Diakite. Not sure if there was contact there or if he is battling some cramps here. Looked like it could be cramps because he's asking for some hydration. Now Diakite, one of the few players on Saturday to play every single minute of that game. Mm. And people who have played soccer knows that's going to carry over for days after. And Diakite has been down at least twice already in this first half. And he looks uh, to be a little fatigued. As we see the Irishman Doherty getting some advice from the Scotsman. So a nice round of applause for Pompey Diakite. Rowdy's fans have really grown to love number 44. Plays so emotional, physical. Lays it all out there every single time he takes the pitch. Not only respected by his own teammates, by the opposition as well. Just looking at some pats on the shoulder as he was walking off from the Montreal Impact players. They respect him as well, the kind of effort he brings and leadership at the back. So final mi minute here of regulation time in the first half. We'll wait on extra time here. As watching it sail over is Morad. Great job by Tarek Morad. Just the position of his body. Just feeling like having a good eye on him. So one minute of extra time. Stiakite there being looked at. Rowdies have to be careful here. They don't concede at the end of the first half. You know how this beautiful game is. Seems like the, the last minute of a half, things could either really go your way or head south. Yeah, Drew, you brought it up early on. Concentration is everything. And when your legs start to give out, the first thing to go is concentration. So you not only have to start strong, you have to finish strong in a half. Azira now over to Brock Yard. Camacho. And now it's Diallo. The ever overlapping Danny Lovitz. Swanier weaving his way through that Rowdy's defense and taking a little bit too much time. The impact unable to get a shot off in the final second. So scoreless through the first half and a busy one for Pape Diakite and the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Well, the Rowdies have showed the energy tonight. The young players, the fringe players, showing Coach Collins what they're made of. And I think Coach Collins has to be impressed with the first 45 minutes of this Rowdies team. Second half coming up from Al Lang Stadium in downtown St. Pete. Great to have you with us tonight. Be sure and stay with us for the second half.
Welcome back to Al Lang Stadium here in gorgeous downtown St. Petersburg. Drew Felios alongside Ryan Davis. Tampa Bay Rowdies scoreless with the Montreal Impact after the first 45 and change. Suncoast Invitational rolls on here from Al Lang Stadium. And Ryan, let's assess the first half of action between both of these sides. Montreal with several chances. Tampa Bay's defense coming up big. How do you size up that first half of action? First and foremost, um, the Rowdies back three again, very compact, very composed, snuffing out a lot of chances. We just need to put more pressure. The Rowdies need to put more pressure in the midfield to sort of snuff those chances out further up the field and not absorb all that pressure um, lower, in the, lower in the field. On the Montreal side of things, they're going to start coming down the sides a little bit more, try to find some width and try to sort of spread that back three out a little bit and try to cause some more gaps. But uh, the first half, very good on both sides. A lot of energy by the Rowdies, exactly what Coach Collins wants. And Coach Remy for the impact, exactly what he wants as well, a sort of an away game sort of feel. See Rowdies fans in the stands tonight. Don't get the full effect of Ralph's mob tonight, but we will certainly get that during the regular season as the home pitch advantage here at Al Lang is just awesome and that berm right there bring the family bring the kids it's a great place to be on Saturday nights when this place is rocking welcome to Florida this is the place to be to come and watch soccer Al Lang Stadium just offers the entire package for fans to come out here what a blessing for these people to have this opportunity and this facility here. And the game just continues to grow, especially here around the Tampa Bay area, traditionally a very soccer-rich area. Rowdy's going back to 1975. You know, that's the year I was born, by the way. Wow, and they are that old, huh? Yeah, the historic championship. Rowdy's winning at the old Tampa Stadium, transforming through the years, and what a nice home that they have found here in downtown St. Pete. New ownership as Ray's ownership taking over this historic franchise and new faces fans will have to get used to, but certainly with guys like John McCarthy in goal and Brandon Allen scoring the goals, Caleb Richards as well, should be an awesome 2019. The other side for Montreal, a team with 14 wins last year, certainly looking to add to that. And Anthony Jackson Hamill right there, the Ford, had several chances in the first half that I know he wants to cash in here in half number two. Yeah, his counterpart, Max Uriti, the Argentine, he scored the only goal on Saturday. He took his opportunity. So Hamill will definitely be looking to try and get on the score sheet tonight. Pressure is on him a little bit to try and move up that depth chart, if you will. Montreal, a seventh place finish last year in the East. Still relatively new to the MLS scene as they began play there back in 2012. The Rowdies will enter just their third season in the USL, so still very much a newbie in USL championship now. David Shunway puts things in motion now for the impact. Drew, just want to make a quick note. The guy on the ball right now, Safir there. He has played in some of the biggest clubs in the world, like Inter Milan. He's now coming to the game here. Just want to see how he composes himself in the middle of the park and see if he could affect the impact. Montreal now quickly with Schwanye and McCarthy coming up one more time with a denial. Anthony McCarthy answering the bell yet again. A one-on-one -on -one chance, and boy, did he snuff it out quick off his line like he was on Saturday night and he does not give these strikers a minute to breathe so impact now with Cabrera on the pitch several changes for Montreal Kite once again doing good work for Tampa Bay and now there's Jordan Doherty trying to play it forward Rocky Yard, a little tight up there. Tejada, kind of a thorn in the side of this impact side. And now it's Baya. 
one of the areas that Coach Collins is trying to look for, for new blood is in the middle of the park. Jordan Doherty, the 18-year-old, given the opportunity. And he's going to be looking to compose himself and pull the strings for the Rowdies tonight. Lego wears number 92. Rowdy's looking for the flag, and finally, the offsides is called. Now, Ryan, I want to explain to you, and for the MLS fans out there, USL Championship, what does that mean? Well, USL Championship League was last year the USL. So that just went through a name change. USL, now USL Championship. Now, there's a new league this year, USL League One. And that league composed of 10 teams all over the country and some great franchises as well, Tormenta FC. One of them, the Rowdies, will scrimmage Tormenta this coming weekend. That's a new league. And then the third league, USL League Two, is formerly the PDL. So that's the expansion that has gone on underneath the MLS in the world of soccer. So MLS at the top, USL Championship, then USL League One and USL League Two. Just great vision on the part of the USL to break this thing up into three tiers, as well as joining, have, making a partnership with the MLS. Now it, it provides a platform for these players to improve at the organic grassroots level, Drew. This is where it all begins. You and I, we talk about the end product on a Saturday night, but it all begins in that organic sort of grassroots level in the third tier. And that's what we're trying to provide here in the USL. A player down now for Montreal, and that is Ken Krolicki, the midfielder out of Plymouth, Michigan. And this does not look good. Well, immediately, medical staff has come out. And when the cart comes out, it's not a good sign. Ken so tonight we do not have the benefit of replay. So we'll not see whether Krolicki, how he came down or where the collision happened, but obvious concern on the face of the coaching staff for the impact. Krolicki did get the start tonight. He's a midfielder, and he has been fairly active from the start. Just looking at the concern on the coaching staff staff's face, just a bond already with the, the form of these players through preseason and seasons in the past. They care for these players like one of their own and it's it shows on their face when you see an injury like this Krilicki in his second year with Montreal Japanese mother Polish dad So Krolicki mentioned do not have the benefit of replay, but he did, hearing from our staff, camera staff, he did, in fact, try and challenge, landed awkwardly on the arm, was not anything malicious on, on either side, just came down wrong, and immediately it does look like this is a serious injury, possibly a broken arm. Sure. Um, luckily for soccer, I mean, this is a serious injury, but the arms can be repaired in a timely fashion. And for Krilicki's um, sake, probably will be able to get back on the field this season. The legs, of course, just being such a focal point in soccer. We talked about now this is, of course, an exhibition here over the past week at the Sun Coast Invitational, but still. You're not going to have guys playing 50, 60 percent. Guys play, they want to win every time they put on the uniform, come out here on the pitch. Yeah, especially when coaches set the tone of it being a trial run. These French players like Krilicki, only 22 years old, trying to find his way 
in his career trying to find his way on this impact team they're going to go 100 percent and even though i'm sure the coaches are going to look at them and frown upon them going in uh in risky tackles it's just second nature to anybody who plays sports and it's so hard to tone it down and put up that sort of guard if you will when playing out there so really hope Kriliki comes out on the better half I think he's done a great job too, staying calm immediately when the injury happened. A lot of times you'll see a reaction that that sort of looks like panic, but not the case. A cool customer as he has helped up. And an unfortunate situation here for the impact. Not the way they wanted their night to go, but certainly hope Ken Kralicki is going to be okay. Yep, on his feet, that's always a good sign. His teammates, of course, around him. And it looks to be in between the elbow and the wrist. Sort of a forearm injury, just by the looks of it. Or could be elevating the forearm for a shoulder injury. So well handled by the medical staff here. As Korlicki now will be taken off. And this is a significant delay now in this game of about six minutes. So players obviously have to get loose once again. Yeah, very easy to get cold when the referee stops the um, when there's stoppage time, injury time. As we see the Rowdies players hopping and jogging in one spot, touching the ball around, trying to stay warm. So again, Ken Krilicki, midfielder out of Plymouth, Michigan, in the starting 11 tonight, being taken off. Drafted out of Michigan State. Was an injury engineering major there for the Spartans. First team all Big Ten performer at one point. Only 22 years old. And now a substitute will come in. And that's number 29, Matthew Schwanier, the midfielder. Only 20 years old. So the youth in motion tonight here at this Suncoast Invitational. If I'm not mistaken, maybe the brother of... David Schwanier, brothers in arms on the Montreal Impact team. So resuming play here in the 55th minute, Drew Felios with Ryan Davis, Suncoast Invitational. That takes a little bit of the wind out of your sails, doesn't it? On what, what has been a really fun night. Yeah, it is contagious for all the players, home and away. It's going to take a while for them to get ref back up. And the Impact doing a good job holding possession right now. Trying to find their footing after the injury. So Legault right now wearing number 92 for Montreal. Oh, just a lovely drop of the shoulder by Taylor, getting himself out of trouble. Oh, challenge by Doherty. Does not like the whistle there. A little bump <laughs> for Shom. <laughs> Doherty in that good Irish blood. So back line for Tampa Bay tonight has been pretty stellar. But the midfield has shown a few creases that Montreal has certainly exploited. Yeah. Um, in dispossessing the rowdies in the center circle which co which causes a lot of havoc and also finding seams through the middle while the impact has the ball so something coach collins is going to have to look at and i'm sure the coaching sessions are going to be filled with closing the gaps and interceptions authority with an excellent ball over the top 
looking for number 10, Brandon Allen. So not only do you try to mix things up by keeping the ball short, but you try to go over the top like what Dorothy just tried to do. Try to stretch that back line of the impact, which is going to create some space for the midfielders, for the Rowdies. Jan Ekra now attacking for Tampa Bay. And we talk about the midfield for the Rowdies. One guy who we have not seen yet here tonight, but we could see before the night is through, is Dominic Adoro, number 18, the midfielder out of Ghana. Tremendous holding mid and signed early in the year, a season ago. Had a great impact for the 2018 version of the Rowdies. And he is a guy that certainly plugs a lot of those holes. Tremendous defensively. Dominic Oduro is Mr. Everything. The engine room, the guy who breaks up plays in the back, in front of that back three, starts transition for the Rowdies and creates the attack as well. Also brings the ball out of the back for the Rowdies as well, which creates flow. Well, it's a hot at that time. A little physical. Rudy Camacho sending the youngster. Bit of a message there. We got a lot of should say young kids playing in this game, but this is a man's game, isn't it, Ryan? Welcome to big time soccer, young Juan Tejada. Every time you step on the pitch against these guys, they're going to let you know they're there. Good pressure by the Rowdies. Tampa Bay doing a nice job battling here on the Montreal side as Steinberger tries to track it down. Rowdy showing some fight here since that six-minute delay. The high press in soccer is such an important factor, and it's great to see the Rowdies executing that. And that does come with energy and exuberance. And I think this young roster can bring that this season for the Rowdies. Diakite chasing back. You know what I love about Papi Diakite? Every time he's around, bodies go flying. <laughs> Even when he has the ball, he just cleared it away. I saw white shirts flying. How about that little disguise right there? I love it. And some excited fans to get on the video board. I love it. Here tonight. Beautiful. This is such a great place to be in the months of March and April. May, June, July, August, and September. <laughs> USL championship season here in Tampa Bay. Such a great spot for soccer. Great community, as you just saw. Just want to keep a quick eye. We talk about McCarthy's ability to save and stop those one-on-ones. Want to pay attention to his distribution as the goalkeeper quickly turns into almost a last defender in modern-day soccer. As we see an excellent clearance by him there. Looks like Ty there just got away with a handball. Now it's Legault. Montreal with Camacho. The Frenchman, 27 years old. Schoem gets another touch. Tampa Bay a little bit feistier defensively here, not letting Montreal build from the back as easily as they were able to in the first half. Yeah, we talked about snuffing out that problem further up the field, and it looks like Coach Colling sort of addressed that at halftime. Let's not wait for the, pressure, the ball to reach down by us to start defending. Let's get up on the ball early and often. This pass sliding through, and now Ekra with some space to work with. Jan Ekra, a foot race. Oh, tackle right there, and the official lets it go. That was very, very close to a foul. But that's the injection of pace we want through the middle. The Rowdies want through the middle, and Jan Ekra providing that. Here's Swanye. Quick counter for the impact. Again, Diakite reading it well. Those quick counters from the impact tonight. Those one-twos. Tater now trying to orchestrate another. Those counters do come from a product of good ball handling. The midfield, once the play breaks up, you still have to have the ability to maintain possession and find that through pass. So that does come from productivity in the middle of the park as McCarthy spoons one up. Here's Lego.
Victor Cabrera involved for Montreal. As Comes that press again. Has it again. Great ball from the back. Tavares and Legault for the impact. Legault a nice touch. Some space to work with. Now the shot taken and McCarthy there to knock it down once more. Well, he has just been reading beautifully here tonight. Ever dependable Johnny McCarthy on the spot again. Just reading the angle, snuffing out the shot. But just want to touch on the wing back or right midfielder for the Rowdies. Number 37, Etty Tavares, came in on Saturday night, provided a lot of energy on this right hand side, gets the start, and is giving Coach Collins a lot to think about going forward. Here he is on the ball, looking to just maintain possession, losing it there, but showing that confidence on the ball. And that's what you want as a coach players who want the ball because in professional sports you have to have the attitude and that intangible to make it gotta want it in big moments Tavares that's right trying to chase it down now you know coach Remy talked a little bit about that as well he wants players outside of their comfort zone here tonight which is an away game for the impact he wants to see players perform away from Montreal away from their fans Steinberger sends it far now. Richards and Steinberger. Nice one, two. Tejada also over there. And Ekra now collecting for the Rowdies. Ekra doing a great job in the midfield. Just composing himself. Creating that flow, which we're going to talk a lot more about. Tejada trying to squeeze a pass through. Will be around. He's throwing on the far side. Morad will do the honors. Former Louisville City star. 13 starts last year for Tampa Bay. Great piece on the ball by Doherty. Here's Tavares. Uh, tried to place one there, and Steinberger just a little bit too far ahead. Doherty found the seam, and he put enough pace on it where only the number 37 Tavares can pick it up. Great pass. Good luck. Still looking for our first goal here tonight. Montreal with several chances in the first half, but safe to say that the Rowdies have controlled the pace of play and have the edge here in the second frame. Yes, yeah, second half, they call it the coach's half, and Coach Colin has definitely made the adjustment. Pressure up on the field on defense and try to, con try to create flow, create composure on the ball. Coach Collins locked in. Here in this preseason, it is so important to find that right mix moving forward. Great ball again. Tavares and Doherty sharing. It's a pretty good unit working in right now. Steinberger. Middle of the pitch, it's taken away though, and now the impact with another chance at a counter. Swanye, Rowdies have got to get numbers back. Shifting to his right, Diakite, very physical. And if that's going to be called, is that a little bit late, would you say? No, the referee took his time, gave himself a chance to think about it, and made a good call on that one. Diakite again using that big frame. But at times, when the ball is not anywhere in his vicinity, that's going to be considered a foul. Is it a good foul in that situation? I'm not sure. Top of the box, there was numbers around him to help him corral the player. Not sure about that one, Drew. And it's in a dangerous position, so would like to see Diakite step off or not commit that foul in that area. You give players like Schwanye a chance to get a good look, number 17. And of course, I think I've mentioned this guy before, Safir Tadie, number eight, who looks very, very hungry here. So it's Tater, and he cannot get it through that Rowdy's wall. Wall did his job, and it helps to have some six footers in there as well. A line change of Tampa Bay Rowdy is about to happen here in the 67th minute. One of those guys, Dominic Adoro. Left side of your screen getting set to check in. 
This is a guy who we cannot wait to see. And on the far right, you saw Leo Fernandez also about to check in for your Rowdies. But Aduro now more settled in his second season. The call up from the PDL a season ago. And great to see Dominic here tonight. The man with the blue shoes, Aduro, again, fitting into his role, figuring out where to go and where not to go for Coach Collins. Yes, he looks a lot more comfortable, and he looks like he's going to have a lot more of an impact on this Rowdies team this season. Never forget his blast against North Carolina last year, one that would tie a game and give the Rowdies a critical point. At a critical point in the season, Aduro, his impact was immediately felt, and he was so durable as well. It's one thing to be a great player. It's another thing to, to never come out of a game. He was so, just incredibly versatile. He's a coach's dream, and playing that defensive midfield, that holding midfield position, you need durability, and you need someone who's not shy to shoot, because when defenses collapse on attacking midfielders and forwards, that defensive midfielder is going to find room to hit. And boy, does he have to hit. So there are going to be more opportunities for a duo this season to get those types of shots off. Bush comes way out. And he'll send one down now. The Rowdies see how the biggest substitution of the night impacts things. Now it's Legault working. This one will be crossed in. Rowdy's got to be careful here with Schwanye now collecting. Schwanye trying some skill. And a lot of people may roll their eyes of that type of skill, but in that part of the field, the last third of the field, you want to see your creative players like Schwanye try the flicks and so on. Matthew Schwanye, part of the Canadian U-20 team that failed to qualify for the 2019 U-20 World Cup in Poland. You know how I know key facts like that? Oh. Ryan Sudol. Talk about international soccer and qualifying. He is the man, our public address announcer here at Al Lang Stadium. Drew, you know what I say to that? It's a Ryan thing. You'll never he, understand. He is amazing. You'll never Just understand. Just like Drew. you. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we're surrounded with Ryans. <laughs> So Schwanye sounds like he has a bit of pedigree. Yep, certainly does. So here's Tater now, controlling for Montreal. 70th minute, Al Link Stadium, Drew Felios, Ryan Davis, our fabulous crew with you tonight. I wonder what the discussion is going to be over dinner, dinner with the Schwanye brothers after tonight's game. <laughs> I think the main thing here in the preseason, not necessarily the scoreboard. Of course, you want to win the game, but it's it's making those positive strides, building that cohesion. And I think just through the first 70 minutes, the Rowdies have certainly done that here tonight. Yeah, players knowing their roles, trying to, to figure out where they stand. But effort, it all begins with effort and commitment. And the Rowdy players from minute one have shown that effort. So you build that, you build that skill level on your effort level. And the Rowdies began with step one, effort level and commitment, and are building off of that. Leo Fernandez ahead now to Tejada. Tejada by Tejada surrounded by white jerseys, but still manages to keep possession. That's, that, that's pretty good stuff. You know, when you get into that red zone and it gets kind of crowded, you need your skill players to maneuver the ball through that crowd. And Tejada being such a young player, but so gutsy, so willing. And he is showing to be a quite a find here for the Rowdies. Leo Fernandez, ball at his feet. This one by Tejada drilled. And nearly found a dangerous spot inside the 18 that time. Tater comes out with it for the impact. Again, Tejada, no back lift on the cross. Just whipped it in with a snap. That does take some skill. The youngsters showing the complete package. Gonna have a bright future, isn't he? Yeah, and I hope it's right here in the Rowdies. He was able to take advantage of his trial run 
just signed today. Energy, youth. Skill. And great hair. Doesn't hurt. It never hurts. It actually is a major plus, and it's a commentator's dream, Drew, as you can assess. <laughs> yeah, fans love it. Ladies love the locks as well, too. You would know something about that, <laughs> not me. Still trying to keep what I got. <laughs> and that is a talent in itself. <laughs> Impact now sharing. There's the, there's that hair. You know, there was a guy who once played here in this area, Tampa Bay Mutiny, that is, and Carlos Valderrama. Not quite the locks from Tejada, but pretty close. Also known as Il Pibe, he is a living legend. Ekra battling. Maduro, there's that defense we talked about. And going down. Off the physical play from Xuan Ye. Now our officials will have a quick chat. It looks like more substitutions on the way for the Rowdies. Andrew, I, I just have to add on to that. And yes, it is the greatest hair I've ever seen, Carlos Valderrama. <laughs> so Tejada exits for the Rowdies. And we're going to see Sebastian Guenzati now for Tampa Bay out of Uruguay third rowdy season on deck former New York Cosmo five goals last year he's the top returning scorer for the rowdies so we see two creative players in Steinberger and Tejada leave the field but in comes Sebastian Gwen Gwenzati very very important for the him to hit the ground running this rowdies team are going to rely on his skill and his creativity to get goals and get them often Quintati now sends it back, and how about Quedo Poku, the midfielder from Ghana, number 88, seeing his first action here tonight. He is really expecting to have a big year in downtown St. Pete. Now the, oh wow, what skill. Some feistiness now across the end line. Fans love that. What a brilliant bit of skill by the little number 15. Just came on and is lighting it up. Battling for a shot now, Sean Barry with Poku. Poku has brought some tempo, hasn't he? Here's the number 15 again. You know, keep in mind, you got guys who have been sitting over there on the bench for 75 minutes, and they realize this game is still in the balance. They are coming in to win it as Poku would have had a great chance. Instead, they're going to call a foul on Guinzati. True. These players are trying to find a spot on this team. Little number 15 is doing exactly what Juan Tejada did on Saturday night. Come in, be gutsy, and show off his skill, and he's doing exactly that. Now, the high press is giving the Montreal Impact some fits here. They got bailed out on a call just now, very thankful, but it's showing what the high press can do, what energy can do. Nobody in any walk of life, on any level of soccer, in any sport, likes pressure. Basketball, baseball, soccer, across the board. So if you can play pressure for a long period of time, you will create chances in any sport. Yeah, it certainly has frustrated Montreal in this second half. Also, keep in mind the impact losing Ken Krolicki. And ever since that injury, the impact have not really seemed to be the same. You think I'm onto something there? Definitely. I mean, this is a group that's been away from home now for a month at least now. Talk about bonding. You see a player like um, Krulicki go down, you really feel it. You see the coaching staff, the shoulders drop, the heads dip. This impact team has lost a little bit of luster over the last 20 minutes. Maduro comes up to challenge, now hustles back for Tampa Bay inside the box. See the Rowdies with Caleb Richards on that far side. Harry Novillo for Montreal. And there is the youngster, Caleb Richards, defender on loan from Norwich City FC. Now, Caleb Richards had a spectacular game Saturday night, guys. He was on point and fit in very nicely with Mohamed Kone and Pape Diakite. And looks like he's sliding right back into business as usual mode on that left hand side you 
Now, the number seven, Novilo, had quite a showing as well for the impact. He is somebody that they want, excuse the pun, to impact their season. And all eyes are going to be on Novilo on that right hand side again. Now it's, now it's Legault trying to find an opening. And we've got Chouanye mixing it up as well. But again, the Rowdies holding their ground and they're going head to head with Montreal on some of these key exchanges and winning those battles. Yeah, again, energy creates energy and it's be seeming to be becoming contagious on this Rowdies team. And it is giving the Montreal impact some fits. Poku trying to fight all the way to the 18 and still battling a little bit gets a little physical and as you saw rudy camacho not liking poku <laughs> the yellow card will come out hey it's an exhibition why not ladies and gentlemen if you think neil collins has taken it lightly on this rowdy's team think again players one through 30 on the depth chart are in it to win it quadru poku has come on sort of a veteran in this USL league and this Rowdy's team now with the amount of change and he's come on with 15 minutes to go and he's putting everything on the field tonight something to prove number 88 for the Rowdies he Kane. wants he wants to set the tone that he's a leader on this team and he's doing it minute by minute came from Miami FC last year And that impressive frame that he has, I'm pretty sure Coach Collins has said, uh, use that frame in the middle of the park, please. Only one goal last year playing for the Rowdies. I think just ask him. Certainly expected more production than that. It was a difference maker in several games last year, though, but just not able to get as many goals. And there's Poku now, sort of a marked man as Tater goes right after him. But let's pay attention this season. We saw on Saturday night, we saw Andrew Tanari, the number 15, push forward in that creative spot. Look at Poku and see if he sits on the shoulder of Aduro. If both of them sit deep and plug holes and create from deep, may have a new role this year and the goals may not be a factor. Let's see. Right now he's hovering around that center circle. Seems like Aduro is playing a little deeper. So Aduro. Rowdies now with Chouanye defending. Tampa Bay trying to get into that final third. And there's Aduro again with it. He'll switch the Beauty point of attack. Of and the Rowdies now with Sean Barry. Barry with MLS experience with real salt leg could not control at that time he's frustrated himself but what a pass just pinged it across the field right on Sean Barry's laces and little upset the Puerto Rican international sorry the Puerto Rican international on the right hand side just couldn't control it and definitely wanted to do more with that such a fantastic pass so not much offensive life for Montreal here in this second half. John McCarthy, Rowdy's goalie, has not been busy over the last 30 plus minutes. And again, Poku just fighting off defenders trying to make a difference. Rowdy's trying to make this really interesting. They're doing just that as we're going to have a corner. These busy bodies, number 29, coming on there as part of this youth movement by Tampa Bay Rowdies. And Poku sitting deeper, using that range, that passing range to create from deep. Yeah. Antoine Hapno, number 29, the Frenchman, former Princeton Tiger. Rowdies with Leo Fernandez blast deflected by Tater. What a plus to have Leo Fernandez coming in on that right hand side. Good ball out to the back by Diakite. Under pressure by two forwards and just flicked it to the open. Sean Barry. Oof. 
Tackles are flying in now. Montreal Impact starting to respond to the intensity. And the Rowdies have a free kick in a very, very nice position. I love the energy of the veterans. Poku, Leo Fernandez, Dominic Garduro, just sort of turning the intensity of this match to another notch. And since they have come in the game, it is a decisive edge right now to Tampa Bay as far as pace of play is concerned. Yeah, it seems like that tenacity has taken its toll on the impact. And it looks like the Tampa Bay Rowdies are the ones ruling the roost, as they would say. As we see Quadro Poku looking very interested, standing over this ball. Dominic Arturo. <laughs> looks like they're having a bit of a discussion on who should take this free kick. So it's Aduro and Poku and Dominic Aduro Good thinking. With the blast, and it's going to come back to Barry. Oh. Tried to place it. His service got broken up, and the run will end there. Clever free kick between Poku and Aduro. Aduro just couldn't get it past the wall, though. And another good cross inside by Sean Barry. He could not, the Rowdies just could not get on the end of it. Uh, Doro just has that explosive right boot. The one that he used last year in North Carolina. As now McCarthy will assess things. So if you are Tampa Bay, 84th minute, time starts to become a factor. Just continue what you've done over the last 10 minutes or so. Yeah, I mean, the fresh legs have come in. So there's no reason to, to drop the intensity. And boy, it's shown that the strategy has worked. Snuffed the ball further up the park and then went on the ball, try to compose and slow things down. Try to take control of the flow of the game. Now we should have significant stoppage time as well. Just want to mention that with Ken Krolicki, the Montreal midfielder going down with an arm injury. At the beginning of the second half, it was about a seven minute delay. So we'll see how much stoppage time we're going to have. That could change the complexion here of this game late. Yes, definitely. Both teams seem like they really want to play out here. The referees are seeing that. They're going to add the, the regulatory amount of time to see this game through. It is no doubt one of those games that both teams want to see through to the end. Look at the tussling going on here in the 84th minute. Sebastian Guazzani asking for a call. Rudy Camacho all tied up with him that time. Official comes over, helps him up. I think he wanted the call, not, not the help up, right? That's right. <laughs> You know, I feel it for these officials sometimes. He comes to a preseason game. He said, this is going to be easy game night tonight. Not with this Rowdies team. They are setting the tone. And everybody has to earn their keep. Even Doherty. the referee. Doherty going down. Now the impact with Tater. Taking a little bit off it. Montreal. I, th I think for the impact here, just holding it. Passing it around, trying to develop something, waiting for your opportunity here. Probably the best way to proceed. And they do just that, getting a chance inside the 18 and a late response by Tampa Bay for a corner kick coming up. Now, Drew, there are different ways to score goals and create chances, not only through pace and exuberance. It's also a bit, uh, through patience and craftiness. And the Montreal Impact have enough ball handlers on the field to create using that route. Tater now the outswinger. This ball in the box headed up. Another chance for the impact. McCarthy will come up and take care of it. Credit to that back line again. The six footers. Oh, and John McCarthy looks like he's favoring the leg here. Not sure if it happened on that set piece sequence, but. Perhaps came down a little wrong that time. There are a handful of players that if they go down, Coach Collins will want to jump off a bridge. And that's one. The goalie. He is that good. It's 
So trainer immediately comes out. Hopefully this is just a scare. McCarthy still very young, 26 years old. Tons of soccer ahead of him in that goalkeeping position. And I think just maybe felt something that time. Yeah, at this stage of the season, three minutes to go in, reg in regulation time in a preseason game, you want to go down. You're not going to take any chances. Your coaching staff are going to support you no matter what. And you could see the head turn towards the bench. Oh, thumbs up by McCarthy. Of course, there's always the magic spray, Drew. It has healed many of injuries in soccer before. So John McCarthy, one of two goalies right now on the Rowdies roster. They still have Macklin Robinson. Who we have not seen tonight, former New York Cosmo and DePaul University star. Also spent some time with North Carolina FC. Right now, though, McCarthy, I think, content to finish this game. He's put together a nice clean sheet up to this point. Yeah, this is almost 100, I would say 180 minutes of good soccer by him. Saturday night was flawless. Yes, there was that one goal he can do nothing about. Uh, was not a clean sheet Saturday, but was definitely not his fault. But he has done his part yet again tonight, but still walking gingerly. He's just off your screen now. Here he is. Uh, look like he is second guessing himself here. So McCarthy will come out of this match. And perhaps a safety precaution here for Tampa Bay. Macklin Robinson looks like he is ready to check in for the Rowdies. So key injuries in this match on both sides. Ken Krolicki of Montreal and now John McCarthy. The number one goalie for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. This has been a tough night for injuries. Yeah, both coaches, this is the last thing they would ever want. Both things they'll ever want. But, you know, looking at that injury, it could be a precautionary sure. take by Coach Collins. Just Still a scare, though, here late. Sure. When your goalie comes out, but sure. certainly precautionary. Yes. And it gives the young Macklin Robinson some valuable minutes with his back line. Something you just can't replicate in practice. Game time. So there's Robinson. Former DePaul Blue Demon. And what looked to be a handball by Camacho has now turned into a handball against the Rowdies. So let's see how much extra time we have here, especially with the injury to McCarthy and eight minutes of extra time. So significant enough for at least three or four chances on both sides. Yeah, eight minutes is an eternity in soccer. Great composure by the back line again as we see the impact starting to press now. Sean Barry, right side for the Rowdies. Barry closing in on the 18, looking for contact. Legault was right there, waiting for a whistle, and it doesn't come. At that point, the referee looks to his linesman for some help. No flag, so play on. Yeah, and here's Novillo. Novillo will switch the point of attack. Impact now. Rowdy's in place defensively. Trying to get a shot on, and this one will sail way wide. Well, we go back to that bit of transition that the impact are capable of. This time it was Novillo, Azira, and then Tader with that look, but he shanked his left foot shot. And how would you like to be this young man right here, Math Macklin Robinson, coming in late. Did not expect to play tonight, but your number is called. I mean, if I was in Montreal Impact, I would try a shot at half line. <laughs> Absolutely. See what this kid is worth. Pressure situation. Even though it's an, an exhibition, Sean Barry and the Rowdies playing a little bit faster right now. Tenari Oof. got a foot on it. And more physical play as Tater now begins another counter. Novillo. Even numbers on both sides. 
Now from the right, trying to cross it in. And in place is Caleb Richards. Richards doing a great job over there. Just so solid back there, picking up exactly where he left off on Saturday night, fitting in so comfortably in this back three. Almost home away from home for Caleb Richards. Right in front of that VIP section here at Al Lang Stadium, fan favorite. Here comes that press again. Impact so composed. And now look at the, row the Rowdies retreat and pick up their positions. Excellent discipline play by both teams. The go will throw it in for Montreal. About five minutes remains in this match. Drew Felios, Ryan Davis here at Al Lang Stadium. It's been a fun exhibition between the Rowdies and Montreal. No scoring to show for, but two teams that have really gone at each other. And both sides showing well. Montreal Great fans, job. we invite you to join TVA Sports Saturday night as the impact hope to convert shots like that as their season continues on and that'll be at 10 o'clock saturday night notre soccer on tva sports and the san jose quakes waiting in the wings and their defense going to be just as strong if not stronger than the rowdies i just got a touch on that last play macklin robinson what a save now coming in still fresh behind the airs and pulls off a game-saving save. Tater, set-piece opportunity. Not many chances for those tonight. And this one goes over the goal. And again, Montreal with a near goal. Yeah, this time the back three don't get their head on the ball, but still using their body to throw the attacker off balance. Can't get that header on target. Uh, again, Macklin Robinson with just a fine stop. So Dominic Caduro now with Barry. Last few minutes controlled by the impact, trying to close this match with a flurry. Lego 92, a good job off the bench tonight for the visitors. Here's Tater. Good placement here. Oh, beautiful. A couple of rowdies collide, beautiful. but still Robinson able to take care of it. Yeah. Good read by Papi Dekete. I think he may have left it for Robinson. I think he heard the call from the keeper. And Macklin Robinson just fitting in perfectly here. Oh, Gwenzati. Finally gets a call. The cunning South American feeling a little bit of pressure on the back and goes over to get the free kick i tell you something uruguayans write the book on gamesmanship Maduro, here's poku poku with a shot just off to the left tried that far post well just a little snippet of this incoming season of quadru poku Coming from deeper, linking up with Andrew Tenari. A little one-two. And Poku shooting wide, but showing what he can do. Coming from a deeper position. Sitting right off of Dominic Aduro's right shoulder. And looks like Neil Collins has discovered something, Drew. Like a bolt of lightning was Poku. <laughs> yes. I mean, to be as big and as physical as he is. Yeah. And to run as well as he runs. I yep. mean, he is certainly a very special talent. He is using that size and ability and great ball control as well. Doherty. 
Oh, great skill. We play on. And finally a whistle. Oh, that certainly came late. Crowd not going to like that. Yeah, the impact players use the appeal to the, to the fullest. And I think it persuaded the linesman. But nonetheless, good bit of skill by Doherty. Oh, talking about skill. Excellent play by the defender, number four. Looks like Camacho. Likely in the final minute here. Rowdies need possession, trying to get it back. <laughs> and a little frustrated this time. That's Hoppenoy. And he's going to get a yellow and possibly a red. And Poku trying to tell the official, hey, let's let cooler heads prevail here in the final minute. And Hoppenoy's got to, got to, get control of himself here too in the final moments great job by quadrupoku getting in the middle trying to we have to understand referees are humans too and poku trying to defuse the situation and i think he's did, did a great job so antoine wasting no time making his impact for the rallies we've seen some really spirited play here by both sides and that is going to do it here from Alling Stadium. <laughs> the referee still going. A scoreless draw, the Tampa Bay Rowdies and Montreal Impact. Hope you enjoyed it. Coach Neil Collins and his USL championship side, again, going head to head with the MLS and a strong showing by the Rowdies. Hope you enjoyed it. Sun Coast Invitational continues on Saturday night from right here in downtown St. Pete. Hope to see you then. Until then, for Ryan Davis and our fabulous crew, I'm Drew Felios. Have a great Wednesday night.